Hi gang, what's up? It's your buddy Chavez from A12 Guitars. What's going on folks? I'm sure you're enjoying this uh, lovely wag job weather. One moment it's 60 degrees, the next moment it's 30. And uh, it's basically <laughs> driving everybody nuts besides creating real havoc in the uh, guitar world because guitars are... You could set them up and next thing you know they're completely out of whack when they go to a gig. So it's a dog and a half. Anyway, let me show you uh, another fret job I gotta do. It's another Strat. This one belongs to Ryan Voodoo Child Newman. Um, if you've ever gotten a chance to see this kid, look him up. Uh, you can find him on Facebook. He uh, basically is like the second coming of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Now, I'm sure you guys can say Kenny Wayne Shepherd or this or that and the other. No, trust me, this kid. Because he is brutal on his guitars. After I did his Blonde Strat, if you guys remember that one from a while back, where I made a brass nut... He tested it by making sure that he could drag it across the floor <laughs> in my shop, right on top of the concrete, so pretty impressive. Here, check this out. Alright, it's a red strat. Hey! I know, it doesn't look like much of anything. But this is Ryan's newest acquisition. If we can get this camera to focus, finally. Gosh dang it. So, what's going on here? Well, Ryan got himself a nice 70s neck vintage piece and of course you are going to be refretting this guy going to keep that seven and a quarter but his biggest thing as usual he's asking please do not touch the finish so that's quite a job to do normally I'd actually take all this finish off grind it all off and uh, start new and actually refinish it that's usually part of like my refrets for uh, maple boards but he wants the original finish on here so he can blow through it himself. Not a problem. But what makes that a drag is that I have to cut the finish off the sides of each of these frets. So I'm probably going to be going through at least four or five razor blades for this. And then I have to heat the frets and slowly pull them out. And not overheat because if not it will blister the paint. And that's what we can't have or any burn marks. So this is going to be a job and a half to do. But besides that... One of the interesting things that Ryan told me about was this poor bastard actually had a Floyd installed on here at one point. Now, whoever redid this guitar, excuse me, this neck, did a really fantastic job. I mean, you know, he laid in a new chunk here to fill in for the fretboard going across. And then he actually put in the new filler piece for where the truss rod would anchor. Really good, good job. And check this out too. As I bang it on the light. Got to the football uh, inserts, and he even tried to actually follow the grain as best as he could. So, I mean, you know, kudos to this guy. He, you know, it's it's not the prettiest thing, but damn it, man, this is pretty functional. Really cool. It's nice to see stuff like that. Good work from good guys. So, hats off to the guy that did it. I have no idea who the hell he is, so whatever. He never called me for my birthday, so fuck him. <laughs> and we've got a mixy body. You know, it's nice red. Kind of reminds me of Greg Livesay's uh, second guitar, his 62 reissue. Now, here's a whack thing, though. Now, right here, I'm sure you're going, well, what? I see a neck on the body, but here's the problem. It's standing so proud off the front of the body. Um, you know, it's either one of two things. The neck is too thick, or the body itself is, <laughs> the route wasn't deep enough. I think it's a combination of the two, because this neck actually showcases something interesting. And I was in a conversation with Scotty, and he mentioned uh, one of these mass manufacturers um, saying it's not worth getting a custom guitar built because uh, depending on what the guy was doing or, you know, if he was drinking or if he had a bad day, had a fight with his wife, you know, the guitar isn't going to come out that great. But, you know, I'll help, it's like, you know, let's put an asterisk to that. That also happens in mass manufacturing, and this neck is actually an example of that because... When you mass machine a lot of parts, and if you're trying to cut costs and you're trying to make things super fast, things happen. Like for one, the neck is a little too thick here. Another thing too, which was crazy, is that the neck is actually too thick at the head. It's so thick that my little insert bushings here are coming almost to the very anchor point of the strings for the post. I mean, it's nuts, but it happens. And this is what makes a lot of these, you know, strats a pain in the ass. Now, for a lot of you guys, I liken it to like an old Volkswagen Beetle that, um, you know, you could, you see the same car all over the place for about 40 years. And yet, 
be, depending on the differences of the of the years between the cars, the fenders might fit, but they don't exactly look right, or they don't quite fit correctly. So that's always one of those things that'll happen. Now, otherwise, and you can see that you know Ryan had to jack the bridge saddles here like up to heaven. So we're gonna route a little bit of this body down. We're gonna bring it down by about maybe yeah, two mils, maybe three at the most, so we can get a little bit of back angle on this. And uh, we're gonna have him all ready to go. And I'm sure he'll probably be dorking around with his wiring. He knows what he's doing here, so I don't have to worry about that. The only thing we gotta really worry about is right here. Because this is where the money's made. Alright guys, anyway, so if you got any questions, you want to post any comments, please go ahead and do so. You know, 812 Guitars, located Greenwich, Connecticut. If you got to call me, please feel free. 203-969-5987. That number again, 203-969-5987. Have a good one, guys.